and welcome to another episode of Friendly Plastic TV. I'm your host, Linda Peterson of Linda Peterson Designs. And I have a very special episode for you today. I'm going to be dedicating this episode to those of you who tell me that you don't have a creative bone in your body. And I'm going to drag it right out of you and show you that you do. And to do that, we're going to be making some Zentangle beads. Does that sound interesting? Well, let's get started and I'll show you how. Before we start out with today's project, I want to explain a little bit about what Zentangle is. As you look at this, you may see a very complex design, and it is when it's all grouped together. But when you break it down into different sections, you can see that it's just very simple shapes in a repetitive pattern. Here I formed a checkerboard just by drawing lines vertically and horizontally. Over here, it's just um, circles and uh, curved lines. But when they are grouped together, they do form a more complex shape. So I know that you can do Zentangle because I know you can draw a line and a circle. Now let's apply this to Friendly Plastic and let me show you how to make the beads. First thing you want to do is you want to cut off um, about an inch and a half square, it doesn't have to be perfect, of just a plain white Friendly Plastic strip. And we're going to be using um, permanent markers. This one here is a Copic. I also have Sakura um, makes a line uh, of uh, permanent markers. You want to make sure they're alcohol based and that's very important. And to create your Zentangle, let me get a thicker marker here. Basically, Zentangle is just creating beautiful images from repetitive patterns. So if you can draw a square, a line, a circle, you can do Zentangle. And it makes up a, a more complex art form. So I'm just going to begin by placing some circles. You can do as many or as few as you want. You can divide this off into some stripes. This is kind of like your world. You create it how you want. Okay. Now after you get um, all of your lines placed it could look something like this. This one here is not a true Zentangle, but it is a form of doodling and um, it is somewhat of a flower shape. Now what you'll do is you'll gather a uh, scrap of plastic. This can be a piece of plastic that you have left over from another project or maybe one that didn't turn out. Um, this is just a piece of pellets that I've colored with blue. It's left over from another project. And this is my doodle piece that I have laying face down onto a sill pad sheet that I've covered with some petroleum jelly. And what I will do is I will heat these with my heat gun. Now you can use any uh, heating method that you like. The water method also works really well with this, but you'll heat both of these pieces until they're soft. Now that I have both of my pieces soft, I'm going to form the scrap piece of plastic into a ball. I'm using my hands. And then I will place this ball down onto my doodled piece of strip. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to lift this edge up and I'm simply going to roll it over. Now you'll have some excess of the white left over and that's okay. And bring these two edges together. Try not to stretch the pattern too much. And if it gaps just a little bit, let me show you how to do that. You're just simply going to press down with your needle tool to close the gap. And you'll work it together with your finger smoothing the seam. Work on the seam first and then worry about your ends. Your ends you can pinch together or you can simply snip them off with a pair of scissors. Snip off any of the excess here. And then continue to refine this into a bead. Once you kind of have a, an oval shape there you can gently roll this into a bead shape. Now to get the hole into the bead you can um, drill it. Here I'm going to shape this here so that the main part of my design is on the front of the bead. 
Or what I would do is I would use eye pins and just simply insert an eye pin on the bottom and an eye pin on the top. And this is a really important step. After it's cooled, you'll want to coat your bead with a, a couple coats of Mod Podge. You can use the gloss or the mat, it doesn't matter. Let each coat dry in between. Just brush it on and when it turns clear, it's ready to go. But this is a very important step because if you don't use the Mod Podge, which is an acrylic or water-based sealer, when you put your alcohol ink on and color the bead, the lines that you just created will smear all over the place and that's no good. So make sure you put a couple coats of Mod Podge um, sealer on your bead before you begin to color. Now to color we're going to be using alcohol based ink and if you're familiar with the alcohol ink you know that it's a translucent meaning that you can see through it so all the lines that you just drew on your bead are going to show through the color and that's what I really like. What I've done is I've added um, alcohol ink to a plastic palette you can see it's pretty well used here and I never clean this off but I do allow the alcohol to evaporate and that way I can control my intensity. I also have a little um, container here of blending solution or you can use rubbing alcohol. I'm using a fine liner brush and I'm simply going to pick up some color in my brush using a little bit of the blending solution and just like in kindergarten I'm going to color inside the lines. Now I can control the intensity of the ink depending on how much blending solution I add to it. I can also go back in with multiple colors and um, blend to create new colors. Let me zoom in and show you this real quick so you can get a better idea. Okay, so let's go and uh, maybe I'll add a little bit of purple here just to kind of show you how the colors blend. and they stay on nice and pretty. You can see that's making a darker purple there. So you'll color your bead all the way around like I have here and when you get finished um, it could look something like this one here. This one has um, some O oh, circles and you know it's just kind of one of those beads. Um, I heard the wind blowing and so I decided to put some leaves in there and actually this one I like because it is not um, it's not so smooth it kind of gives it a little bit of a whimsical look when you're finished painting um, the color onto your bead then you're going to go back and you're going to apply two more coats of the Mod Podge sealer again this is very important don't just dip it in um, nail polish a clear nail polish or in resin because as the resin drips off it'll take your alcohol ink and your pattern with it. Now this one here I did a couple days ago. This was my first one so it is kind of a work in progress and um, this one I decided to put a coat of clear resin over the top of the Mod Podge coat and it made it um, kind of like a little, uh, little bit more glass like. So you have lots of choices just have fun doodling and uh, I know you'll get addicted just like I am to making Zentangle beads. If you can draw a straight line or a circle, you can do Zentangle and I hope you have lots of fun doing it. Be sure to check us out on the web on our blog at friendlyplastic.blogspot.com. You'll find loads of creative inspiration. There's all kinds of eye candy, free projects, all sorts of stuff on our blog. And be sure to subscribe so that you don't miss our daily posts. You can also friend us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter. And that'll do it for this episode of Friendly Plastic TV. I gotta get going because I'm going back to make more beads. <laughs>